Um, welcome back to another episode of Deckology. This week, I am joined by the two fellows that I uh, would say inspired me to start this podcast. Um, it's Chris and Danny. You can find them on Instagram, and I will throw their names in the description and on the screen or wherever we end up putting this in post. Um, <laughs> thanks for being a guest on the podcast. It's kind of a flip this time. It really is. Thank you, first and foremost, Tyler. We're, we, Danny and I have been talking about this. We're like, oh, we're actually going on a different podcast. We're getting interviewed now. Like, this is not normal for us. Yeah, that's weird, but um, I'm, I'm for it. Yeah, 100%. Flipping the script. <laughs> I, you know, it's, it is interesting because I typically just feel like I ramble a lot on podcasts. And so now it's going to be interesting to see if I can stop rambling and ask questions. <laughs> we're about to find out. <laughs> we're the, we're the guinea pigs here. We love it. We love it. I, love, I know it's who better else. It's, um, it's going to be a fun episode because both of you guys sent me, um mail packages to open after oh yeah a luke wadey release and i was like geeking out about it with you guys and then you guys were like hold up and then so then two <laughs> packages showed up so um i want to get into those in a little bit but first i want to talk about first so recently <laughs> if you are in the card world and have not been paying attention to anything first announced a first collab with bicycle i was a little bit surprised um i'm gonna throw my opinion out really? there real quick and then i can't wait to hear yeah. your guys's perspectives so at first i was uh, i'm gonna probably laugh every time i say first about pun, first pun intended. i know dude f yeah. literally um i was a little bit surprised by the fact that it was just the broken borders I was I, I was met with disappointment because I was expecting like something different, but then as I saw, and I, I kind of have to stand corrected. I didn't like publicly shit post and talk about it. I was just kind of like, oh, it's whatever. Um, Lucas Magic, he kind of made up a render off of like a sloppy paint project that I did off of it. What I thought it was going to look like, um, and I saw the broken borders, and I was like kind of like underwhelmed by it. And then I was like, as I saw Chris like kind of show more, not just like really high end professional pictures of it, but I saw the deck like in motion and I saw those like signature golden borders. I kind of, it started growing on me. And so am I going to brick up on it? I don't, I doubt it. I trying to be more responsible in general. But well, who bricks I, up on anything lately? Yeah. Anyway, now it's yeah. more half bricks. I think in my yeah. it is. A, it's a half brick game we live in. Yep. Yeah. Um, so, what were your guys' initial thoughts on the first bicycle collab? Well, Chris, do you want to shit on it first? Or do you want me to <laughs> love on it first? What do you, what do you want to do? I mean, you know what? Tyler did a little shitting, then did a love. So you know, what? I'll do okay. the shitting. So we'll go one, two, there one, and then we'll end on you. <laughs> um, first off, I think I didn't. I did not. I did not not expect him to go to the USPCC and do a collab because when I first got into the community, I got into Chris Ramsey like everybody else did. And every time he did a deck review, he always said he loves USPCC. That was his favorite stock. That was his favorite, you know, back, writer backs were his favorite thing. So for me, it was a, you know, match made in heaven. He grew to popularity. He has such an amazing following. He has first odd shop. But you know what? Yes, he took him over a year to get this collab done. Um, put his heart, sweat, and tears into it, I thought it was underwhelming. I mean, granted, the mm -hmm. signature golden broken border that he started with the first V1s, amazing. I think the inside of the tuck, having that first inside, amazing. Because bicycle, you have to have a certain trademark, and it has to be a certain way. Yeah. Um, and they are not, and USPCC not is, yeah, mm -hmm. it's like you have to have the bicycle logo, it has to look a certain way. They are sticklers on their trademark. Um, I mean, even when we did our crafters um, and Danny yeah. was able to talk to them about to talk to USBC to get the bicycle trademark, they allowed us. But there were so many restrictions that we had to go through to make sure that the bicycle branded logo was properly done. Um, oh, yeah, you can't you can't really touch much yeah. of their stuff. So Got you really it. can't. Okay, so it has to kind and, of stay. Okay. But I think. Yeah, I think it looks nice. I think he did an easy job, but I think it's underwhelming. It's like taking a re regular rider back, putting a little thing in the corner, and then now you're charging how much? Probably we like yeah, we don't know. We don't I'm, know. I'm, I'm expecting guess twenty. I'm, yeah, I'm, gonna say I'm 15. thinking fifteen to twenty. I'm, I'm I was leaning to fifteen. So it, I'm, 
I was saying fifteen twenty, but at the same time, it's like, okay, do I want to spend fifteen twenty for that, or do I want to spend like literally fifteen bucks and get five writer backs, Please. or maybe like four or five writer backs? Yeah, exactly. I mean, his it's just a writer back with a gold accent on one side. Granted, the face cards are going to be standard, which we know it's going to be like that mm. because he's a magician, and maybe the Ace of Spades might have a little tweak. Uh, it does. Oh. Um, he posted that earlier. Um, it's just the the first little logo, right? Yeah, right like on he the does. Oh, Ace like he does. So, ba- so basically, like he does with every, everything else, with yep, all those right. other ones. So you know what? It's under for me. It's underwhelming. I don't think I'm gonna. I'm probably gonna drop this one. I'm not gonna cop anything. I'm not gonna get a half brick. If I do, maybe I'll get one. If you know, but that'll be mm-hmm. on a secondary market. I'll wait till maybe Henry gets it. You know, so you know, SoCal. Um, but that's just me. I mean, that looks amazing. Okay. I mean, for him to be able to get that done, amazing. I think with USPCC is freaking fantastic. But I'm underwhelmed. Fair enough. Not All right, following. now now Uh-oh. let let me uh, let me jump in here. Um, when I saw it, I understood what was going on. I understand the simplicity of that back design with that first broken border, um, just because working with the United States Playing Card Company. For a few projects i know how much of a stickler they are to especially mm-hmm. that writer back mm-hmm. the fact that they let him even put anything on it just blows my mind okay i mean but it's, um, okay. it's chris ramsey but it, i i know it is chris ramsey but i mean how many people have probably asked to take that writer back and do something to it how many people have gotten told no or didn't want to just put a stamp on it you know um of course uh, so from Watching Chris Ramsey when I first got involved in, in magic and stuff, I I looked at him like, you know what? That's probably the goal that he had in mind that he thought he would never get to. And, mm-hmm. yeah, okay. it's underwhelming, but I get it. You know, working with someone's pride and joy, they're not going to let you do much to it, if anything. I I'm yeah. Like I said, I'm still surprised they let him put the first logo on it. <laughs> you know, like, right. um, but I, I get it coming from him. You know, I know Orbit did their Tally Ho collab. Um they're not that much of a stickler to the tally ho back as we've seen so many different iterations mm-hmm. of that back design over the years. Um, so I, I think comparing those two are completely different just because bicycle protects that rider back mm-hmm. so much. I didn't realize that. And I'm very, so, and I'm very yeah. curious. I, I know, I know on Wednesday that the day that the deck releases, Chris is releasing a video describing and going over the process of what it took to get there. And he said, he's going to go into, into all the particulars. So I'm, I'm very I'm very curious to see how that goes, you know. And we're recording this the day before it drops, right? The day yeah, before, yeah. So yep. this is going to be. Yeah. We're going to find if so, this, uh, this age is yeah, like underwhelming milk or wine. I get it. I love it. I'll get I mean, a few. I mean, you know you what? I, like I said, I give him props for being able to work with USPCC and get that on the writer back, you know, back yeah. design. Getting that that takes a lot, but also you got to think about it. USPCC wouldn't do that with anybody, but it's Chris Ramsey who has God knows how many million followers. He was at CardCon. He was one of the featured guests at CardCon. You know, he's one of those people that if it was just, let's say, I mean, there's a few people that could probably get away with that. Probably him, David Blaine, um, you know, people of that stature that have those followers, that have the people that want them. But exactly. But people like like myself and Danny and the whole, (laughs) you know, Dealing Seconds crew that we want to do crafters. We, there's no way in hell. There was actually, I remember one time, I remember, Danny, you said, um, or was it me, that when I submit, or when we submitted the thing, they had to re- we had to remove like one piece on the top of yep. the tuck flap. There was like one number that we put in there that we had to remove because they would not allow it because of legal yep. restraints. They are that restrictive. Everything else was like they they were like you have to you have to include the um, ad copy in a certain place you have to put the bicycle logo this way you can't do this and we were like okay and you know James yeah, and you have to have the, the side you yep. have to have this so, uh, like it's yes. it's just it's it's a protected brand and I and I totally understand I and that's their bread and butter and don't get me wrong like I everybody that knows me knows I love writer backs writer backs are my jam give me all the colors purple is actually my favorite you got a coffee table um, yep. I do. They're yeah. over there. And I have another <laughs> side table, a drawer full of more writer backs. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, I personally prefer just regular writer backs. Mm-hmm. Um, when I see them, in, if maybe I'll get one just to see how it is in person because maybe my, maybe my you know, perspective will shift when I have it in hand. 
But right now, just looking at photos, I'm just a little bit underwhelmed. And I'm like, because that opportunity could have been so much more. I thought if he would have done maybe the first logo better and changed the back, like I think what you did or even what Solomon did, um, playing Cards for Life, um, what he did with the whole angels and the Chris Ramsey logo around with the Mm -hmm. first, I I was like, okay, that would have been an awesome back design. I thought that would have been a perfect collab. I think USPCC would have okayed it 100%. Given the bicycle branding because it's Chris Ramsey, that would have been like yes, go right ahead. But I'm right now as it stands until I get it physically in hand, I'm a bit underwhelmed. I uh, okay, yeah. See? I hope it's crushed stock. That's one thing I do hope. Oh, it's crushed bicycle. That's that's like if I. Were I mean, to with the amount with the amount that they're gonna print. Yeah, with, he's gonna. I know he listed it as limited, but you know he's probably gonna pr- print pr- like five k, a hefty amount. Five to ten k, think so. for that much yeah. of a yeah, for that big of a brand. Yeah, see, I, I oh, thought it was interesting. Old and with bicycle, yeah, with uh, bicycle, and I, I feel like with that big of a brand doing that big of a collab, I kind of feel like why would they go small on that? But then again, um, there's some people that go small and they call it ultra rare. So um, today also was a <laughs> yeah. surprise drop uh, of <laughs> transition I, I'm, of a uh, Fontaine segue. Yeah, um, I was. I woke up and I saw that they just dropped cards randomly. I kind of missed that about them. I, I when they would just surprise drop stuff like that. That was like something I always thought was kind of fun. Um, but without revealing the backs was was uh, ballsy, ballsy. <laughs> and but I still saw comments like Do you bricked expect- up. Oh, I'm gonna have to buy it. Uh, I just got a couple. And I was like, I just don't know if I'd ever buy. Uh, that's like. A testament to their loyalty of their followers yeah. um, like I'm gonna buy it no matter what and I think that's cool that a, a company can do that um, but to but to just drop them and be like you'll like them maybe <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> all right yeah but, I mean I, I, I saw it at like seven eight like an hour after they've been on sale and like everything was still for sale except for mm-hmm. like the what the six brick option that they have <laughs> or whatever that big yes. one is yeah um, yes. but like you, they you do get to see the tuck cases, but as with Fontaine, the tuck cases don't necessarily mean that's what the cars look like. Exactly. Um, I'm, man. <laughs> I think Danny and I have the same mentality when it comes to Fontaine. I'm, I am so over them, mm-hmm. and just just these the, the the pre-orders, but like people not getting their pre-orders yet, and now you're dropping this that without much shipping. warning, really. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and the shipping shipping for one deck was like eight bucks. Whoa! I saw a lot, okay, of, yeah. a lot of hate in the comments about that. Yep. Yeah, um, and and to go back to your ultra rare USBCC won't let you print anything less than a thousand. That's what. Yeah. Okay, I'm glad you brought that up because I was really curious about yep. that because I was like, how do they get away with doing that? And so you just think that they print. Um, that they just print a thousand. Well, they got to print like, at least a thousand. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And he pops. Yeah, he's he's got to hold on to him. Yeah. I so I don't know what he does with the overflow, but yeah, there's 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 no way. But there's also an overflow. I mean, you print a thousand, you commit to a thousand, but they always overprint, so you're getting eleven hundred. Yeah. Hell, oh, even right. Legends, I think, is nine hundred minimum. Yeah. It's it, and I I mean, unless he's going to a company like WJPC or doing Carter it Mundi. through Cardamundi, Cardamundi, you can do two hundred. Yeah, I mean, but then even with Cardamundi, even if you do 200 Cardamundi, they're going to charge you an arm and a leg. <laughs> yeah, yeah. By the way, I, I, I'm sorry. Like, we said this before we started recording. That trailer that he did for these things. <laughs> yeah. Is the, and that, that fa- it's the stupidest thing in the world. I get that he's trying to look like it's New York, and it is, <laughs> but it's the stupid. And I'm like, everybody knows I am from New York. I yeah. get it. It's a grungy yep. area, but it's a bullshit trailer. I think he's just trying to get those young millennials or young Gen Zers that don't know anything about New York, and they're trying to grab that grungy mm. style. And okay. I just think it's like, because I, I mean, honestly, if you think about it, nowadays everything that's retro, so the grungy New York style is retro, is in right now. Uh, so yeah. he's trying yeah. to. I mean, don't get me wrong; he's he's capitalizing on marketing one hundred and one, and he's doing a great job. But I just think it's stupid. <laughs> you see New York City, 20, and you still and you still don't 20, get to see the back designs. <laughs> but you still wait, don't get it's twenty twenty seven. So he's saying that, in four, he's like, oh, in four years we're gonna have alien civilization here, like, like I'm sorry, <laughs> yeah, that, that part was. But I mean, full, part. full disclosure, 
I mean, I bought into these. You know, I, 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 mm-hmm. I, the, the, what are these? The fantasies. Um, yep. So full disclosure, yeah, that was the last thing I've done, and I'm not going to do anything more. Um, and I'll be honest with you, I got a couple of the rare ones, and I made more than my money back. So yeah, I'm, I, I joined that resale party, you know. Mm. But so um, maybe that's okay. I think it's uh, obviously it's resale. A lot of people yeah, right. have the resale, though. I'm not so sure the playing card market is that strong right now um, for reselling. But I just I, I don't like when someone comes out with like three decks that are on pre-order and then hey here's what 15 decks blind bags 16, go for it yeah yeah yep it is, is that, what, what where, where is are it, those foils now is now is this more of a money grab because he's trying to fulfill his pre-orders because he didn't I mean granted he's gonna make money but it's like is that no, is I, w- it, I, w- I wouldn't think so just because or is it just a money grab in general just because you know he's trying to make money, he's just—I think it's just capitalizing the, on on everybody's wants the mystery bags, the blind I bags. Mean, Pe- people love the gambling aspect I do of love it. that part. But at the same time, everybody yeah. has everybody has a gambling. Well, addiction. that's why I got all those because it was it was fun. You know, I, I got a lot of good opening. views on my Instagram live opening. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like it's but fun opening. Also, yeah. but also is it? But also at the end of the day, Zach has transcended past a cardist, past a magician. He's now a businessman. At the end of the day, he's running a bu- he's running a business, yeah, and business is you want to make money. That's yeah. so it's just like I I don't I don't knock him for making money. I don't because everybody I, I everybody he's knows that a New Yorker has a hustle. Yep. He's he's finding a way to hustle his ass off. He's trying to make money, which you know what everybody in this day and age should. But I just think the constant saturation of decks. I think it's going to get overwhelming. And how how much does he dilute his brand? Because okay, he, okay. when he first started with those, with the, with the Supreme backs and the regulars, like he had a brand that everybody yeah, knew. Yeah. But how much, how much is he now diluting it by doing a lot of collabs was, and doing these crazy things? Yeah. I, I was totally into him, and then those futures came. Yeah. Oh, during that Carter Street Con, like, oh my, those were, those were the best Fontaines he's ever made. In my opinion, I, I do. Love they those. were just, they were new, they were different. There was only what five, six. Yep. There was only six. Just five, like six, yep. that. Realistically, you could get them. You yeah. know, um, yep. and I was totally into those. In full disclosure, I did a full set and I sold it. But um, <laughs> but it was that it was it was after that. Like I don't know. It's just I have personal reasons I don't like them, and I, I don't yep. want to get into that here. Um, but I just think, yeah, I think you're right, Chris. He's gonna he's gonna start oversaturating himself. Yep. Taking a real quick break to remind you to like, subscribe, do all that fun YouTube stuff to um, help support this channel as well as the Dealing Seconds channel as well. If you guys like more of these interviews, let me know. Um, Links in the description to everything that we're talking about below. Now back to the show where I get ready for a relatively large mail day. Shit. Um, Oh, shit. Here, let me me fit in. Yeah, let me get... There you go. (laughs) These have been... Um, Yes. The... The matrix deck, that, that thing is beautiful. These arrows, man. Um, okay, so, so with, the, with the matrix deck, which which I yeah. like, is he came to the Patreon page and said, "Here are four options. Here here are four options. Um, tell me what you guys like. Do you want one way, two way? Like he was asking He's his so fans. Interesting. Our feedback. Yeah, his his Patreon is amazing. He's always. I mean. I think right before the new year, he was asking, he asked Patreon patrons, what do you want to see more of this coming year in the Patreon? And I think I told them that I would like to see more of your creative process and more behind the scenes, how your, you know, your process works. Are there multiple variations of like one deck? Do you have different versions? And I think that's what we're seeing. Cause Dan and I are both top tier patrons on this Patreon. Okay. Um, so day one here. Yeah. Dan is from day one. I'm a year and a half in right yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I remember when I saw this and there was different colors colors, by the way. There were multiple different versions of colors of this on the Patreon, oh. if you're a member. You would see you would see different mm-hmm. colorways. Um I thought all of them looked great. Um, you know, hint there was a different color. I'm not gonna say what color it was that I liked more because you know that's a Patreon thing. If you want to see it, join his Patreon. Yeah. It's great, by the mm-hmm. way. Um Probably link in the description below. I don't know. You know, you never know. You know. Yeah. Sorry, Tyler. I made I made more work for you. Sorry, sorry. We're gonna we're now gonna you, try now to get you know some the more fe- patrons here. Yep. And 
Yeah. No, but I think it's great. Um, I Because he even voted on this one, do you want a one-way or two-way? I'm yeah. more of a two-way fan, personally, because me and OCD having a one-way fan uh, and then flipping, it's, it annoys the hell out of me. So next thing you know, I'm, like, fixing the deck up. <laughs> I noticed that. But the, this... Yep. But with this deck, I think either a one way is really nice. But I voted for it too. That's so cool. So with the so you guys kind of touched on what I wanted to ask you guys about. So you're part of his Patreon, and I what I've discovered yep. in my time in the community, uh, which is probably about two years now, is that there is different Patreons for deck designers. Um, what like kind of what kind of like tiers like so you well, you mentioned some of them where it's like if you're if you kind of want to see behind the scenes or have some input on the next deck that's like a tier um what are some of the other tiers for like some d deck designers out there i guess yeah um Dan, well, what, 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 like of, like yeah. um i've been a part of luke's from day one it's going on what two years now um and then with his tiers, you know, everybody has that baseline where you can just get in and just see the posts. You don't yeah. get any benefits. You, or, or you can vote on things and kind of see things that are coming. Um, and then there's a tier where you get like one, a couple free decks mm -hmm. one, okay. one time a year. Um, and he, he just pulls random from his stock. Nice. Then you get to your top tier where you'll get, um, I think it's six, six decks. We get, yeah, half a brick, half a brick, I think, twice a year. Yeah. Every six months you get half a brick, and then once a year you get a custom dis bespoke deck that he creates for you. Right. Um, wow. And he asks your input on. He gives you certain questions like which which, which style, style do you want. Yeah. yeah do, do you want an arrow? Do you want a mono? Do you want now it could be a matrix now because he has matrix in there. Yeah. So like Danny, like this right here. This was my first one. I got an. I made it. I wanted. I said oh, arrow sorry. deck and give me the Oakland A's colors. That's oh, all. That's I, that's so all I told cool. him. I got one too. Yeah. And then That's he came up cool. with this crazy this is, ass thing. Yeah, this is Danny's, oh, by the way. And then I was, what I do, a... what he does is he he'll, he'll give you one for free. <laughs> yep. And then you can buy as many as you want. But once that once that's it, that's it. That's yeah. it. So oh, Dan, I love that. So I got I got very lucky. Danny was able to sell, allow me to buy one of his bespoke decks. So it's still celloed. I haven't touched and it. And then and then, and then same you get thing. um then he he'll make a Patreon deck. Yeah. And oh, that okay. one one included in your package, you could buy more. And then I believe there's a Patreon half brick box too, if you're in that part of that tier too. And then the custom carry case with his yeah. So the yeah. the car so it's not his not his name signed on the deck. It's actually his name signed on <laughs> the carry case, etched into the carry case. Yeah, clever. So, that's so I do know cool. I, I I do know Luke is one of one of the better patrons because. Yes. Not only the free gifts, they're they're cool in the custom deck and stuff, but he's he posts on there at least twice a month, at least sometimes more. But it's a yeah. lot of hey, here's what I'm working on. What do you think? Hey, I got, I'm, I'm hey, I was up late the other night. I designed this these three decks. What do you guys think of these? Should I can okay. should I continue with them? Should I not? Like he's yeah. very and he'll engaging. listen. Yeah, oh, he's very engaging on it. So he, he is 100 percent worth it. Oh, 100. Um, I mean, okay. I, I used to be, I used to be part of his like middle tier um before and then i was part of another patreon and then i stopped because it wasn't as engaging as i thought it was going to be so i dropped it and i went all in on luke's um which you know for me is a good thing because i i really do appreciate luke i like what he mm -hmm. does how active he is in the community he's not one of those creators that he just puts out a deck and stays shut for like three four months he stays you silent see that a lot. you yeah. see him you see yeah. him constantly engaging constantly posting and it's crazy because since he lives in the UK, like I'll post something at let's say ten o'clock at night here in New York, so it's like three in the morning in the UK, and he will immediately respond being like, "Thank you, buddy, <laughs> you're a legend," and repost. I'm like, wow. "Dude, are, do you ever sleep?" <laughs> yeah. um, but you know, so so like Chris was saying, like I know he was part of a Patreon that was underwhelming. So was I, and I okay. still am. I I am on the lower tier just so I can keep in the know, and that was Black Roses. Um, okay. He gave you um, a couple free decks throughout the year, um, but for someone like me, I have everything he has, so I don't need more. You know, got I've got it. like five okay. bricks of black roses in my house now. Um, and at the time, the top tier after a year, he would create, he would draw you as a court card, ah. and then he dropped that because he didn't realize people would join his Patreon so so much. But I got, so I got one, and so then I just dropped it down because it just wasn't. He he is engaged during like. 
when a Kickstarter is about to come, he's starting to show things like, hey, should I do this with the? He'll ask people, hey, should I? What should I include in this package that I'm not okay. going to charge a whole lot for? You know, but it's not not as an interactive as I wanted. Okay. Um, yeah, but I at least keep a yeah. toe in there because you know every now and every once in a blue moon, Chris Brown will let him throw a little tease of an orbit out. You know. Um, uh, yeah, and then that's uh, cool. I think I think now that's I know I was on Pig Cake for a while a couple years ago. If you know who he is, uh, magician. okay. <laughs> funny, <laughs> he's a, he's funny, as hell he, magician. He's he's, he's a great mus- magician. He's he's really good at sleight of hand, but he's very vulgar um, in his teaching. And you should look him up. He's very entertaining. And um, his Patreon it was wasn't that expensive. And there were just hundreds of tricks, moves, theory yep. with coins and cards. And it was just That's it cool. was too much. I, I my brain would just exploded. I couldn't keep up with it. But uh, he's <laughs> he's definitely a good chuckle. Yeah, and Patreon is interesting because depending on depending on the tier, and it depends on the creator or the you know the person who started the Patreon, what their t- tier levels could be and how much you can charge per mm-hmm. t- per level. So, for example, you have like with Luke, if you even if you're on your like le- level one tier, level two or level three, you will all see posts. You will all be able to engage in the posts. Level two, yeah. you get that plus something else. Level three, you get everything in level two and one plus extra. So mm-hmm. everybody changes the pricing. Everybody adds more or less. But then there are some who will charge you an arm and a leg, and you don't, you barely get anything from it. And there are big name creators on Patreon that, you know, honestly, you you don't get enough for the money that you're putting in, okay. in my opinion. Okay. So I would just say, just do your research, you know, um, and just see what. What you ultimately get? Yes, because mm. okay. uh, I'm I'm giving Luke for almost forty. What is it? Forty a month? month. But didn't right? he just change, didn't he just change it? Uh, I I think he's about to add another the higher nice. tier, uh, another higher tier, which means That's we're cool. going to be spending more money, Dan. Yeah. So I mean, it, you know, just just do it's your fine. research, and you know, and if you join one, it's okay to back out. Yeah, right. You know, I, I backed out of true. plenty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think it, it, you know, it just sounds like my you my, my, my thing. What I always tell. Yeah, so my thing I tell people, especially new creators, like don't don't chase the hype and don't chase the the coolness. Don't don't do it. Mm. Don't blow your money to be cool. You know, don't don't right. have FOMO. Even even yeah. though we all our first year or two just that's how we all end up with like five six hundred decks. <laughs> it's that first Facts. year or two. I'm, yeah, I'm gonna use this as a as an opportunity then to we're talking about broken borders. Maybe I I don't know what Chris sent me, so I was gonna open that. And see, you and open Chris's first. That's good. All right. Yeah, because mine's yeah. underwhelming compared to Danny's. <laughs> that's fast. That's, that's what she's interesting. Okay, so here, um, SoCal. Shout out SoCal. <laughs> hey, hey! I just got a. I got a. I had a fulfillment done by SoCal, so I needed the bubble wrap. <laughs> that's, that's. Hey, awesome. we all use it. We all yeah. use the bubble wrap. Oh uh, yeah, I definitely. I used it to send off. him stuff. That was that was even funnier. It's full circle. I sent him stuff using his green bubble wrap. Yep, <laughs> that's hilarious. I think yeah, if you're in the card community, yeah. you've got green bubble wrap. You've got more than more green bubble yeah. wrap than you probably ever expected. That's and half yep. card boxes. Yep. Oh snap! Yep. These are the arrow decks. I feel yep. like uh, like it's my birthday right now. Shout out Emily for having <laughs> a birthday. I'm so. <laughs> 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 so i sent you i sent you is that the yeah this is okay it looks wow. like the v1 with the alternate tuck yes the v1 Sick. with the with the open tuck on the back so that was um so dan and dave reached out to him and said hey can we make a different oh no that's the regular no, v1 isn't that's it? Regular, that's the regular, regular v1 regular, oh yeah. that's a v1 era oh yeah. the other one the other regular the alternate one's all black yeah and that's so oh, that's dude. the that's the alternate tuck on the v2 Oh. That's my favorite. That's my favorite Luke Wadey deck right there. Yep. So you this have the V one. Yep. yep. So you have the V one and the V two side by side. So you can see the and you already have the um. You did you back the arrow oh. V threes? The light blue ones. The yeah, blue the light one, yeah. blue ones. No. Did you back I those? Didn't, I I had just gotten these were the first ones I ordered and I hadn't gotten them yet and so I was like well let me get one of them first before I okay back so we're, another so, we're one. Yep. so Dan and we're sending I, him some decks yeah and, and then we saw we got you we got you <laughs> yeah we got you <laughs> we got you we so so, you, so you'll see you'll see so you'll see where this comes from the progression of this um, oh, okay. where the the grid you'll see V one how he started how v2 went and then you see this and then of course the blue one is the v3 
fascinating. Mm-hmm. Okay, so the blue yeah, the and the v, blue the one v. is what you have a poster of, right? I feel like I've seen you guys. Yes, I do. Did he say, okay, I that's do. I, I have saw. a poster of it. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, and the V ones are a one way design. Okay. So then the V twos were the first ones where he did the two way design the, with the arrows. Y- yep. Yep. Okay. Nice. And then what kind of stock are they? They are Cardamundi, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, nice. So I think they're... they are. Or are they, are they USB-CC? Um, Hold on. Let me get mine out. Mine are actually I think good. they might be USB-C. USB-CC. I think you're right. <laughs> oh, no. They're USB-CC. Yeah. yeah. USB-C cube. Yeah. Both V1 and V2 are USB-CC. Yeah. I want to see so, yeah. this. So you say so the, the V2 is This is the original. Yeah. Okay. V2 was got me into it. So this is the original V2 case. Tuck. So it looks like okay. this. If, so if you're watching shiny. on YouTube, yeah. If no, it's yeah. actually it's, it's a just, just it's a standard case. case. Okay. Yeah. So and that yeah. one's the the mat with like the embossing on it. Yes. That's what, okay. So this doesn't have yeah. it. Yeah. This has no embossing. So if you're watching this on YouTube, right? If you're listening to this on Spotify or any other podcast, if you check on YouTube, you'll see what we're talking about. Um, yeah. Tyler's holding up the V2 alternative tuck, and I'm holding the V2 original tuck. Um, the V, like I said, the V2 does have the embossing on it. That Same cards, is... just different tuck. Okay. Oh wow, those are that pink. <laughs> <laughs> That's like a special yeah, kind right? of like it, yeah. it's a lot of his decks and photos and videos just don't don't do not do them justice. I mean I've seen pictures of these, yeah. but you're exactly right, Danny. These like the photos yeah, and videos yeah. don't do it. Wait, so- it is such a unique kind of like similar to the green. It's such a unique shade yep. of its own color. Yep. Yep. And use wow. a black light on them, by the way. Yeah, use a black light a, on the V two. I need so to buy a black be, light pen. I I've got. I feel like I've got enough decks now where I could probably justify buying now, a black light pen. But but now, if you open up the V ones, you're gonna see such a crazy change yeah, from the, the V one <laughs> to the V two. Really? Yeah. What so, you, so yeah, I did yeah. put them in DS ones. So was I made this sure. Like, I made sure they came in DS ones. I know, dude. You you really decked. Yeah, you went okay. So okay. And, and the crazy thing about the V ones is they they barely funded. Yeah. 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 Okay. Barely so funded is... campaign. Now look at them. <laughs> but yeah. What year did this design come that's... out? I'd have to oh. look it up. I don't. Yeah. I was because like he's been in the game for a little. It was. I, I started. I I've seen. Yeah. I've seen. I, I came out. I started in the community after he came out with the V ones on Kickstarter. Um, okay. I was more involved in the V twos, um, and the V twos I really do enjoy. Ah. Uh, yeah. I see yeah, the, the, so see, the one way design. Luke Wady deck. Yep, and okay. we see how it changes from that to the V two, and I think I think he realized that the V two design is where. Wow, wow! It funded, it funded just about three years ago. Wow, so he's yeah. really January I mean, twenty twenty two or twenty twenty. Yeah. That's cool, man. That's fascinating. Yeah, the, see, wow. The, I mean, the the one way fans are really cool though. Like when all of they are things then, going the but, way it's supposed to go. Pretty sweet fan. Yeah. <laughs> that's fascinating i love that it's that's what I, I noticed about the grid fours that i backed was like it was really cool when everything's faced in the same way and then when it goes the other way you're like or if you mix <laughs> yeah, them you're up like, you're like oh, i can't appreciate it as much now <laughs> yeah that's why i prefer two-way designs because i'm like at least this way i know it's going to fan properly and now that's dan's awesome. dan opened up the limited version of the grid fours i'm like yeah. I, I i only got one of those so I, I didn't dare open always it. get two I, you know, you know, it's Luke Wady, and that's actually so. The one you're about to open, the ABH, that's another oh, one yeah. of his decks. That's a typography deck of his. Also, okay. another one way, another one way deck. Um, but it's I amazing. thought it was, I thought it was a great add on for you, so that way you could see his different styles and appreciate. Didn't so he, Patreons get a first crack at that? Yes, Patreons did get yeah. a first crack at that. Um, oh, then it went okay. out, but then there was also. He also did the This Way Up deck that he released to Patreons, as well as oh, the yes, the this remember way the up twenty deck. the twenty twenty one deck, the Tip twenty twenty one deck. I don't know that one. That was the one he created for a company, and you could buy it if you wanted. Oh yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I got one of those as well. And I then, can't see my display from where I'm at. Yeah. It's, mine like, is right stuff here. Is just right, yeah. I, if, if you see my Instagram post, I have a wall of weighty, so it's there. So I I, 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 I like that one. That. I, I I thought that one was was unique, Ooh. and it's like totally a yeah. cardistry deck. Or yeah, by design anyway. I, I thought I thought this was like perfect for you. Oh, that's cool. The like the numbers. Yep. That's yep. cool. That's a that's original. 
That's yeah. Is there any? I've never seen a typography deck like that before. So yeah, when you fan it one way, you get a design. And the other way, you, damn. Yeah, you're so right. This is yeah. a cardistry deck. Yeah, that's and cool. with you being cardistry Tyler, I was like, I have to send them a cardistry deck. <laughs> wow, that's that's trippy. Get them. That's, we I think we got them hooked on Luke Wadey. I know you guys. Yeah, like when I got these, and then I was like, oh, I know that these guys like Luke. I'm going to talk to them about it, and then you guys knew every answer, to every question I had about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, cool. we're fans. We're fans. Like, like we're we're, not, we're we're fans, but you know, I'll, I'll, I consider him a friend because yeah. we talk that much. Yep. Even not even about cards. You know, he's. Mm-hmm. He's been someone out I know I've leaned on, especially when I started making cards, like uh, asking questions and stuff. So. Yep. And there are times where he'll hit me up and just be like, "Hey," he'll be like, "Hey, buddy, how are you doing today?" Just, yeah, that's just saying hi. And I'm like, "It is." I'm like, you know what? To have a creator like that, I'm like, "Okay." That's what I was gonna say. So, like, a common theme that I'm like picking up on. So, Danny, I guess while I unbox part of this, like, you're obviously <laughs> yeah, pretty involved in the community quite a bit as a deck designer yourself, and so when you're kind of you have you kind of worked talked with luke like about deck designing and like did he have some influence with like so your design so product? i yeah. you know i when it came to my first one freshman year um since it was a one way you know he was one of the first people i showed just to get his opinion in that because i know he'll give it to me honest you know um so it was more just getting his feedback on that what I, I, I actually leaned on him a lot when it came to junior year yep. for the back design because making that look – I wanted it to look like a pencil mark but not like a pencil mark. So I, 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 I talked to him a lot on that because I'm like, is this okay? Does this look – you know, because that, that was the thing that was bugging the heck out of me the most out of junior year was, was that. Um, but, yeah, I, you know, I, I've shared him stuff o- o- over, the, over the years and – um, Daniel Snyder of Black Roses also actually too. Okay, so yeah, but I, I talked to Luke Lady more, but Dan- Daniel and I used to talk an awful lot when that I first is started. My fave. <laughs> I love that deck, boy. Oh, and the gilded. Oh, it's the gilded too, boy. Can we? Oh. Can I? Can I tell you how much money I lost on that deck? All right. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, if it's but uh, hey, great uh-oh. talk. It's it's Good. great Beautiful talk, talk. Great deck beautiful deck yeah. i mean it's, it's okay i recouped it we're we're okay <laughs> i'm glad good, good luck on I, that package now tyler that yeah <laughs> that whole sophomore year deck okay so this is this weighs a lot this is a um lot. <laughs> i wasn't sure if it was actually shout out to pirate ship get your shipping labels from pirate ship people oh yeah 100 percent. okay i know i do cheaper That's, better uh, cheaper pirate ship um, Danny, what as I open this though, what's one thing that mm-hmm. you would give advice to somebody that wants to design a deck? What's like one piece of oh, advice easy. that if you First, could, oh, if you could give yourself yeah. advice? I already know. Back when you, okay, yeah. What is that? <laughs> design what you like, not what other people like. Don't like when you when you ask people's opinions and they shift your deck from I want to make this and they shift they want you to make this. Don't make what you want to make. Don't listen mm. to people. Oh, and so there, there have been get their feedback, but yeah. don't don't make that change your your vision. Oh, and there have been times know. Danny will hit us up, will let us, you know, in the dealing seconds crew, where he'll be like, "Hey guys, what do you think of this?" You know, on the on like whether it be junior year or whatnot. And we're like, like I'll tell him, I'm like, "Oh, I think this." Whether you you know my opinion of it, I don't mean mm-hmm. for you to change anything, but I'm just giving you my opinion, my thought. I want you to have your vision, that, yep. which yeah, is yours. Yeah, I don't. I, it's not my deck. It's yours. I'm just giving you my opinion. And, what I and, think. And if you and if you can have like that one person that you fully trust that they just tell you like maybe you shouldn't do that maybe mm-hmm. you should do this I have that and Darren Lee like yep. if he tells me it looks like crap then I'm just okay I'll start over sorry right. sorry Chris but yeah he's <laughs> no he's no yeah. he's he's the he's person my go to a hundred percent so yeah he helped me with freshman year and, and, and junior so um, yep. but yeah it, it's just do what you want to do don't listen to anybody else that yeah, that'd be can... my first thing of advice. I could see how it would be tempting to want to like follow a trend mm-hmm. or something like that when designing. Oh, totally. So that is, and 
the and but that's what i appreciate about sophomore year especially was just like that originality of the color the colors but also like the face card i mean i don't dude i've spent probably hours talking about that fucking deck anyway I mean, <laughs> go back well, to that's good. literally any <laughs> other episode and you'll hear me talk about that deck yeah. <laughs> um okay so i just got open i got okay the, some uh, a gold package i think it's from uh patrick yep middle man and that's yep. from pat yep appreciate that okay and then we've got oh sh we got a a whole brick box mm -hmm. and then you you stuffed it <laughs> you just with... saw his eyes <laughs> you just saw his eyes just go and then you you yep. uh, use this to you use some jet setters to even it out <laughs> <laughs> yep so I feel like I need to show the camera what I just saw because it probably would also like cause my <laughs> eyes to light up because I've never seen you. You're able to use a deck of cards as like a uh, a way to like create a buffer. A wedge. A, yes, a, a wedge, wedge on each side. Because, of, because yeah, That's you're like, I, hmm, I feel like I need to fill something in here. And so he's like, because I really, I really yeah, wanted right to here. send you the brick box. <laughs> I wanted the brick box to be sent to you. That that was that's like the goal. Sick, and that's like, dude. that's the biggest box I had on me at the time. So that's like, so oh, perfect. Shit. All right. Screw it. <laughs> and so these are the uh, jet setters. Chris, actually, you uh, mm -hmm. you sent me the uh, orange and silver ones that I made a video, my first yep. class review. Yep. On. Yep. And these are that's um, and these nice. are the colorways that follow th those ones. Yep. Ah, nice. Yeah. That's cool. Yep. So now you have four, four out of, out of the five. Which I fly out in February to start travel again for work. So, of course, I'm going to have a jet setter picture with on a plane. Of course. It's, it's, a, it's, it's almost a mandatory, mandatory thing if you've got a jet setter and you're going yeah. on a plane. Yeah. 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 You have to. You, you almost anybody is. that goes on a plane gets a, does yeah. it. Yeah. Otherwise, it's like, do you even fly? Wondering, wondering what he's going to do when he opens this box. Then. I know. Okay, so there's 12 <laughs> decks. <laughs> yep, there's 12 decks in a brick box. <laughs> oh, dude, okay. Yep. Um, I okay. feel like it's a, like a mystery Wait. pack right now. First off, um, they're all the, the same. One. They're all the same. So you can... Okay, they're all the same. Okay. Except for the signed one. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so all the this same. one. <laughs> that dude, I've. So if, you open, if you open one. Okay, so we open, open one. one. I'm going to open the signed one. I'm going to open the signed yep. one because that's just fitting. Okay. All right, so whatever's in here. <laughs> there's 12 of these. Whatever's in here, there's 12 yep. of them. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No way, so dude. I, yeah, so I... If you're um... listening, this is a sophomore <laughs> year deck that I just got done talking <laughs> yep. about. Yep, in a white oh, tuck. So um, in the white tuck case, I I, I had a yeah I had an overrun <laughs> yeah I had an overrun of them. Then I didn't have tuck cases made for them. So I have just a bunch of them sitting here. And I'm like, who else would use these? <laughs> you know, like oh Tyler, dude, that's you know? unreal. Oh, I'm so happy. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, Chris, I, I definitely appreciate you. I don't want. Oh no no, I, it's the gifts. it's it goes. I, you go. I, you hold on. You go. You go three decks to a, <laughs> over a brick 14 yeah. decks and then it's like the uh official deckology deck of the year deck that i'm just like obsessed with i bought another yeah, one yeah. from the kickstarter i've got two uncut sheets of it i when i say like i went all out on this deck i <laughs> this one goes with me so now to I have it. now to so, have a uh, a stash of them is yeah and you I, can use them and not have to worry about opening the side the side tuck all the time you know if you just want to take just one out and just don't. beat it I up you know that man yeah. okay so i have a question then on deck design then so when you are so when did when you originally ordered these or you like create a deck does uspcc do they send you how many do they like do they send you a bunch or how do you go about i guess so, i'm trying to okay, ask so, um, make, like make playing cards or what What's like the process? So, of so what what you do is, yeah. So after after the Kickstarter ends, then you place your order with, uh, you know, United States playing cards, right? Yeah, and okay. um, what what I did is I would submit my artwork to Tiffany, who's the 
the rep, the rep you talk to just to get it approved, just to make sure everything's cool before I even hit Kickstarter. Because I know there's a few people that have done a Kickstarter, and then after the fact, they're like, you need to change this because it looks too much like so-and-so. So I get the approval ahead of time just wow. to save a headache, right? And I've, I've never been turned down on my decks, so that's good. Um, so then do the Kickstarter. And you always just assume you're you're doing a thousand decks or eleven hundred because always they they will always overprint they hardly ever underprint <laughs> your thousand orders so um, so with sophomore year I ended up ordering thirteen hundred because I sold I sold um two hundred eighty eight to Murphy's Magic and then I sold like seven hundred plus just normally which was insane um, so then they'll send you so for that, I fulfilled it myself. So okay. all the decks went to, got shipped on a pallet to a place here in town who did the tuck cases for me. So they nice. got they got the fucking pallet, not me. That's uh, why my <laughs> and then I, question then, is about then, to be yeah. like, you have a pallet of yeah. cards show up here? <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Um, so then I just went and picked it up when they were done. Um, but yeah, they, they all ship in those brick boxes sealed too. Um, now what I could have done was since the when you buy the thousand decks from from them. The tuck is a part of it. I could have designed a simple tuck instead of doing the white tucks. That was an oversight by me. I didn't even think of that, you know. Um, uh, okay. So, okay. whoops. <laughs> there you but go. Lessons so, learned for next yeah, time, you know. So, even if you're say, not going to yeah. use their tucks and you want them shipped in tucks, which they, they, they recommend to keep them safe during transit, um, sure. just design a, a whatever tuck just because you're going to get it anyway. So, boo-boo on my part on that. Pro tip. There you go. But yeah. Though. So, I yeah. mean, I've got... I've got 300 sophomore year decks left, um, and I only have like 30 to 40 freshman year left. So they're okay. What did it? And feel I know like, Murphy's Magic is out of freshman year too. So, what did it feel like when <laughs> that, like your first deck got funded? Oh, oh, okay. So um, I'm stagnant. I'm 1500 to 2000 short with 48 hours to go. I'm like, well, there's no way. There's no way I'm going to make that. No, I'm a new guy. And then I don't know what the hell happened. I know Daniel Snyder shared a bunch of stuff, and then I funded. I got oh, about almost $2,000 in the last 48 two hours. The, the community just started sharing it and pushing like crazy. I don't, I don't know what happened. That's and that intense. was – I was just like, what? That's I couldn't cool. believe it. I was floored. Yeah, so that was an yeah. awesome feeling. I, I couldn't – yeah, I couldn't even describe how like crazy that was. And then, then when you get it in your hand, that that's dude, like that the finished product. You're like, feeling. what? Yeah, it is. Yeah, you're you're just overjoyed because you're like, I I made this and it's right here. And it's like a physical, other people liked it enough to fund it. That part is got to be yeah. Kind of so trippy. it it was, yeah, it was it, it was. And then you know uh, when when you print a thousand, you know you you don't get the crushed stock. So your your card quality could be could differ from print run to print run and i thought freshman year got a really good print really good i thought it came out really well yep handling wise you know and yeah. so you know it's uh it was nerve-wracking i think i was more nervous for sophomore than freshman though yeah be honest with you <laughs> yeah i guess because yeah. it's because i mean i didn't want to yeah. uh, it's your sophomore year follow-up deck i was doing something new with a tuck um Very i lost good. money just yeah. because the COVID supply issues Dude. on paper oh. hit hit the printing company I was using. Oh yeah, it doubled the price on on the tux. Oh. So nothing. But it's okay. I thought it was worth it. The tux is awesome. So worth it. You know, I mean, um, it's so original. Yeah, and yep. it's fitting, and it's all the things. Go listen to any other episode of me talking about it, and you'll get the whole <laughs> review. <laughs> um, yeah, that's so, cool. Um, yeah. Um, Chris, what have you learned since podcasting? What advice would you give somebody um, that wants to start a podcast? Because you have been kind of evolving your battle station quite a bit. And um, um, what's been your big takeaway? Yeah, I would say um, the first thing I would say to anybody who wants to do a podcast is just do it. You know, if you have something to say, just say it. You know, there's always somebody who's going to listen to you. And the best thing to do is like, hey, a podcast, if you just talk naturally, like – us three here, we just like to talk. Um, but then, like, we always say, Tyler, you have the most ASMR voice, and we could just fall asleep listening to you. <laughs> Dude, um, but if you just like to talk, 
podcasting is for you. You could just ramble on, talk, it doesn't matter. Um, do it. And you don't need a whole bunch of equipment. Like, yes, you see all of us have like mics and headphones and everything like that, but you really don't need it. We had, when we, when we started, I mean, Danny, we were just talking about this the other day. Um, we go back and look at like our first podcast episodes and we're like, oh my God, we were so horrible. So bad. It was so bad. I had like a trashy mic that I bought on Amazon for like 20 bucks. I was using I, my computer mic. Yeah. Um, we didn't have headphones. We were using horrible webcams. And it was just like, yeah. oh, God, this is going to be awful. But I think if you're just going to do it, just do it. If you're just going to do a podcast and you don't want to do the YouTube route, mm-hmm. grab your phone, record. Even if you're walking somewhere or you're on a trip or you're in your car for like 15 minutes or even two hours really and you want to say something, just grab your phone, record, mm-hmm. put it on the dashboard, and just record record yourself talking as you're driving um and then you can edit it later on if you want to or you can just upload it right away and i think that's the biggest advice i could give and i think a lot of people nowadays are too worried about what others would say about them Mm -hmm. but or the quality of their of their stuff too and i think i think all of us here as we get older we just stop giving a shit at what people think about us we're like we are who we are and whether you like us or not we're still going to continue with this like danny and i we always say like danny myself and john James and Patrick were like, we're going to continue dealing seconds podcast, whether people listen to it or not. It's something yeah. we enjoy. It's like a They'll therapy for us. I was going to say, yeah. you guys, um, it like the original. I mean, it started just from Instagram Lives. And yeah, it kind of evolved yep. into what it is today. So it's yeah. like, I remember watching those. So it is just like, I having watched the dealing seconds podcast evolve and then kind of like listening to both of you guys just in, increase production value over time has been fun because also it's been fun being able to see how you guys have gotten to like almost different grooves. Like the way that you guys can talk about Kickstarters is it, I'm glad that you guys started again because I, it was always so hard for me to keep up with like what's coming out or like what, how to like what's going on. But then the, on your guys' last episode, what I really liked about it was I had like the research of both of both of you guys are like mavens just like know everything about a lot of things i feel like <laughs> and then <laughs> um and then danny brings in the perspective of having done kickstarter which i thought was yep. really interesting yep. and then chris was going back about like kind of like the order of in which kickstarters should kind of display information and i was like i didn't i never even thought of that but you're right like lead with like who's printing it and like mm-hmm. there was one that was like uh, they signed like an NDA or something and it's yeah. like they were yeah. like hiding and it's like what like <laughs> yeah and it's and that was something honestly and I learned this while watching shout out to another you know I don't know if they're ever coming back you know decking around Steven Tyler yeah um they used to do their what's on Kickstarter episodes and that's what got me into Kickstarters be like okay yep. like how to understand the proper Kickstarter because you know we all can go on Kickstarter right now and there's a ton of campaigns and we don't know how to like dissect it. It's so much information at times. And we're like, okay, how do we go about this? Yeah. So they used to break it down. And that's when I think Danny and I, we got the idea of like, okay, we haven't seen Deccan Around do this for a while. And we've heard a lot of people asking about Kickstarter. So we were like, you know what? Let's try it, yeah. you know, see, we give our own input. Yeah. And and I felt I felt I felt bad that last one we just did. I mean, yeah, we did we, what we five said, and and we didn't like any of them except for one. one like, yeah, we, that's we, what makes we, you guys so credible, we... though. I think it yeah. it's not the fact that you guys like everything. So it is. That's yeah, why I think I purposely listen yeah, we, to. Yeah, after we recorded it, Danny and I were like, "Shit, I hope we don't get any." F- <laughs> yeah. I, I, we we're like, we we're like, we didn't know this was going to be a bashing session, but at the same time, I told them I was like, you know what. At the end of the day, people, if they're going to listen to us, they want to. We always say we are going to be honest with our opinions. Honest, yeah. We say it like it is. And, you know, it's whether valuable. you like it or not, we're sorry, but we're not going to. And, and, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and, we're know, not going to be sorry to, for our opinions. Yeah. And to be honest, like those Kickstarters, pretty much we didn't really we didn't really go through them all. We just reacted live. Yeah. That's what I loved about it. It was right. the it was like kind of like, ooh, that's not going to work. Oh, that's probably not yeah. a good idea. Like, <laughs> but it was like stuff like you're you guys are viewing it through a different lens than what I would have. And and I remember when I first started kind of like just getting into Kickstarter even, I didn't even know what I was looking at. I didn't know what all the add-on stuff was and all of like I was it was just overwhelming. And I think there was even a couple of there was one deck that you guys were like, "All right, we're done looking at this." There's like it was the poker <laughs> the one or one. something. Yeah, dude, there was, there was, like, one that was, like, 
there's so much stuff that you guys were like, let's just, okay. Yeah. yeah. The arc like, one. Yeah. The arc yeah. one. Yeah. And it, it was yeah. just like, and, but it was a really good point though. Of like, there's another one that you were saying like, that could have been its own campaign. And yeah. where it's like, I feel and, like the creator's trying to create so much value that they're just trying to throw so much options at people yeah. where yep. then you've got decision fatigue, but even just before you even make a decision. It's, yeah, I always say I always say because you know whether it's in retail or anything like that, I always say there's analysis paralysis. If you yep. put too much stuff into one thing, whether it be in shopping or whatever, people are just going to avoid it completely. So yeah. I think with Kickstarters, if you add too much information or too many pictures without any text or any information about what's happening, people are just going to get tired of like looking at pictures, and they're like, you know what, screw this, I'm not going to back it. They're, they and, they just get overwhelmed with it. They're like, screw and, it. And, and like probably 80% of them are on their phone. Yes. That's a lot of scrolling on your phone. Yeah. yeah. You know, like, so like what I, what I tell people when, when, when people ask me Kickstarter advice, go find the most successful ones, campaigns and study mm. them. Yeah. Good. Study call. how they, the, how they do their layouts. Like, you know, native tongue docs, playing cards. They know how to just straight to the point. Here you go. Here's yep. our stuff. Emily's really good at it. Luke's fantastic at it. You know, so just find those campaigns that are successful and they've done yeah. multiples and pretty much just copy that. Copy, you know, add your own flair, but don't. Of course. Yeah. Obviously, their their system works. Yeah, yeah. And I think I think for any new person who's trying to get into Kickstarter or wants to create a deck of cards specifically, don't be afraid to mention the printer, especially in the beginning. Yeah. Because <laughs> that, because a lot of people go, we, I think we all have like our own favorite stock, for yeah. example. Like yeah. our own favorite printer in stock. Like I bet right now, um, Tyler, I think your favorite is the B9 Slimline from Cardamundi. Mm-hmm. Nailed it. I think that's like your favorite stock. Right I now. Fa- yep. I'm, see, I actually listen to your, I actually, I actually yeah, listen I to your it. podcast. See what happens? <laughs> I love it, dude. See? We actually listen. Um, and the funny enough, it's like I actually like Cardamundi's old B9 stock. Not the Slimline. Mm-hmm. They had a B9 stock before that that was thicker, and I preferred it. Like it was very similar to the junior year. Not as stiff as yep. junior year, but just as thick. And because that's you have I like, like the bigger like hands, bigger and you kind of like the uh, yeah, you have the hands of like fucking yep. brrr, yeah, yep. fucking girl the hands. But um, but yeah, but if you put the printer name on top, a lot more people will look at your yeah. you know mm-hmm. your campaign. And then also, I've always said, and I think Danny will agree to me, like with me, when you start off your campaign, do the story first. Why did you create the deck? What is the deck about? And because, we also don't need a Bible about it either. No, we don't. We don't need like <laughs> we don't need a full like ten page essay. Just give yeah. us a quick like try to give like a summary in a paragraph. Yeah. Yeah. Just be like boom. I don't need to yep. I don't and, even know. You know and some pictures, you know, maybe you know, break it up a little bit. Um biggest thing is also make sure, you know, your add ons are done properly, how much your add ons cost. Mm-hmm. Also work on your shipping. Like Danny has always said this, even when we did our campaign, he's a stickler for making sure the pricing of shipping is set properly. Mm, like, yeah, because that will make or break a campaign. Yeah, it will. And that's I what I remember when we did crafters and Danny was like, nope, we have to do it this way. We have to make sure pricing is done this way because otherwise we're going to get screwed and fucked over and we're not going to like it. Yep. yep. So, so like, uh, you know, like if, if whoever's doing the fulfillment, they tell me, hey, I'm going to charge you six bucks to ship a deck i'm like okay i'm gonna charge kickstarter people seven <laughs> yeah. i'm only gonna mark it up a dollar and that's just to cover the kickstarter fee that's all right. that really is i don't yeah. I, I i hate charging the money trying to if i don't need to like sophomore year part of my 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 nervousness was charging that much like for the deck but it had to because of the tuck i'm like i i, I personally was like oh it sucks <laughs> you know or like gilded decks gilded decks shouldn't be more that's... than 35 dollars and shout out Emily. She's coming out with the $25 Gilded Nebula decks. Yeah. Coming in, which in the campaign. Insane. Which is, and you know what's funny? I actually, you know, I spoke with Emily, I think a couple days ago and whatnot. Um, and she she asked me, she's like, I don't know how much to charge for Gilded. Do you think 25 is enough? Is it too much? I'm like, are you kidding me? That's perfect like, for yeah, a Gilded right deck. Perfect point. She, yep. she was she was extremely scared about the price point. She was like, yeah, she "Oh my was. god!" But you know, it's you know that twenty five. I think is a is is probably the low you should go yeah. on a Kickstarter mm-hmm. for Gilded X. But for Gilded. Um, you don't need to be charging fifty five. No, <laughs> and you definitely and you definitely don't need to be charging one hundred and fifty for uncut. <laughs> yeah, there is that. I, so see, I, I had to I had to do that. I had to bring it back. See, so know, so, for, so, for, yeah, so, so Chris back. Chris can speak on it because he knows how much an uncut sheet really costs. 
Yeah. yeah. And you I know? have, I only have, right now I only have three uncut sheets in my collection. All three are from that man over there. That one right there? Yes, I have his yeah. junior year, freshman, and sophomore year uncuts. Those are the only uncuts I have. You know, I am need to get them reframed and figure out where I'm going to put them. Yeah. But, but I do have them. Yeah, they're, 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 they're just more expensive to ship than anything. It's that, the freaking tube. Shipping. Yeah, that tube is yeah, not but, cheap to ship. No, it is oh. not. Yeah, this, <laughs> <Let's>, uh, <laughs> shipping this like, is I annoying. know this. Yeah, that's not cheap. Yeah. Um, let's wrap this up by, um, where can, okay. So everybody can, I'm going to put your guys's everything in the description. Um, is there anything you guys want to plug before we wrap this up? I know Danny, you have, um, announcements coming up. Um, I have senior year completely done, um, and ready to go. Well, ready to go for kicks, almost Kickstarter. But, uh, this Saturday, January 28th, my birthday, I'm going to be revealing the tuck case nice. of senior year. And it's perfect, by the way. Oh, I can't wait. Yes. And the back design will come shortly after. I'm working on something to reveal that. Ooh, so, nice. Okay. Um, but I will. Um, but it's so good. Yeah. It's I was hoping so to have the physical prototypes by now. Um, they, they'll they be here next week. But it's my birthday, so I, I got I to gotta tease something. I got to show something. Because I'm like, I'm like, I want to show everybody now. You I know? can't only imagine, dude. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. When you have it and you've been sitting on it and it's done, you're just like, okay, I'm ready to put it all in motion. Yeah. And um, James, James from our, from our group Dealing Seconds, uh, he, he's the one that designed this deck oh, all the way. Nice. Yep. Yeah. And oh, it's, so and it's see that. beautiful. Well, I'm going to say it's classy, it's beautiful, and it's sexy. It's like senior year done perfectly right. And we're going to print with Legends. We're gonna Love do the legends. foil. We're gonna we're gonna do this right. Oh snap! Yeah, foil on the back, metallic yeah, inks man. on the front. Per legends, that's what they recommend. Um, so yeah, we're we're gonna do this. We're gonna do this right. So foil on both of them, and we'll we'll be good. Dude, I'm looking forward to that. Thanks for uh, thanks for hanging out with me and geeking out about cards. Thanks for sending me Thank a you. shit ton of cards as well. That's uh, a perfect Anytime. way to wrap up a Tuesday night. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, th- um, thanks for having us. I'll, I'll any any time. I'll, I'll be on any time. Oh, hundred percent. Uh, yeah.